I'm not even sure how to start the video. How about we're gonna build an Arduino spot welder? That's right. Have you ever noticed that I end up getting closer and closer to the camera? I'm not sure why I do that, but we're just gonna go with it. All right, so we're gonna be building a DIY Arduino spot welder. Now I'm gonna say right off the bat, this is not my design. I did not come up with this or anything like that. I'm gonna murder the name Molectronics. All the information to this spot welder can be in the links down below. And there's an updated version. The one that I'm gonna be building is actually version two and they're already on like version 3.2 something. The reason I'm gonna be building version two is Aaron from the DIY Powerwalls Facebook page was kind enough to send me his DIY Arduino spot welder like a year ago and I just never kind of got to it. Now is a great time to build it because Tom from Battery Hookup was kind enough also to send me out 20 of those crazy 200 amp discharge LiPo battery packs. The model number on these are SPIM08HP. And of course their nominal voltage is 3.7 volts. I capacity tested all of these. Highest one came out to be 7,789 milliamp hours and the lowest one was right around 7,005. For the lower ones it doesn't mean too much because Tom said if you cycle them a few times the amp hours tend to go up. All right anyway these things are crazy. They can discharge safely at 200 amps. That's 25 C. And that's going down to about 2.5 volts which is the low end and they can be recharged at 15 C which is 80 amps and that's the safe discharge and charge rate obviously they can discharge a hell of a lot more than that mother of God so I figured those would be perfect for this build and I just realized I'm even closer to the camera anyway all of this stuff has been sitting in a box right there actually you know what I haven't even opened the box to see if all the parts are there maybe I should do that real quick so let me show you what Aaron sent out a year ago to see exactly what we're gonna be building and then make sure all of my parts are here. All right, we have a big ass red cable here. I don't actually think I need one this big, but we'll see. Two welding probes. The tips, I believe, are just made out of some really, really thick, solid copper wire, which I think I do have some of this, but I'll give you some measurements of all that kind of stuff too. So we got a positive and a negative. We have the Arduino, which I'll show you a couple close-up views in just a minute. The spare Arduino, and I believe it is already programmed because I don't really know how to do all that quite yet. So thank you again, Aaron, for that. And he also sent out a couple extra of the PCBs, and this is pretty much the reason why I'm going to be building version 2. And this is actually version 2.2. So I got two of these, just in case I mess one up and he had a couple battery terminals and this was probably just to test the one that he already has and there's a little tiny screw and washer in here too all right here's just a close-up view of the spot welder there's a few different options now that i've seen on the instructable web page one of the versions has a extra power supply basically to power the board and whatnot but i think there's a little uh, capacitor mod that you can do which i will hopefully be doing on my version so we won't need the extra power supply on the lower side there's also two different ways to make this little contraption right here you can do one way that he did is twisting some copper wire and make it in a u-shape or you can do an aluminum cutout with a terminal on the end, which I'm gonna attempt to do with some scrap aluminum that I do have. One of the other upgrades are these two extra diodes here, and these are for the voltage spike right after you do an actual spot weld. I guess there's kind of like a ripple back through the spot welder, and that could possibly damage some stuff. Other than that, it's basically just soldering everything together and programming the Arduino, and then get right to spot welding. Now, the guy that did come up with this spot welder he recommends of course soldering all the tiny components first and then working your way up to the bigger components so that's pretty much what I'm gonna do first and this also separates because I am definitely gonna want to do that to look at both sides 
And that's what they look like separated. And this is what the bottom side looks like of that board. All right, so basically I am just gonna replicate exactly what I see here, except for possibly the location of these two diodes right here. And of course the negative battery connection and hopefully the power supply. All right, so that's just a quick overview of what it looks like. Now I need to make sure I have all the parts to actually build it because I haven't looked yet. I think everything's here, but I really don't know. I'm just gonna lay it out all on the table. All right, so here's just a close-up view of all the tiny parts laid out across the workbench. Which is a terrible idea if you have a cat. Don't touch any of these, okay? I need probably every single one. You gonna be a good boy? And we have to magically get all of these little tiny parts onto these PCB boards right here. And I just laid all four out just so you can see what both sides look like. A good thing about it is most of them are labeled. A few other things I picked up for this build are some 300 amp ANL fuses because I'm using the LiPo batteries. And I also picked up some XT connectors from Keith. What I'm gonna be doing first is soldering all the tiny microscopic components. And what he recommends to do is put a little bit of solder on all the little pads first and then lay down your little tiny parts. After that, we're probably gonna make some of the aluminum pieces and then make some of the wiring and then hopefully put it together and start spot welding. If I have any tips or run into any problems, I will definitely let you know. So let's get to it. Leave those parts there.
All right, so I'm finally at the step where I can either use copper wire or I can make the aluminum pieces. You can print out basically the aluminum shape, but of course my printer <laughs> didn't make it exactly the right size. I'm not exactly sure why. So basically I am just going to kind of make it myself. And of course they want you to make it from three to four millimeter thick aluminum. So that's what I'm gonna do next. If this actually fit, I would cut it out and then glue it directly to the aluminum and then cut it out. Something just fly by my face? I don't know. And just to kind of show you exactly what I'm talking about, the length is not long enough and the width is not quite wide enough. So that's the only problem. But if you do measure everything out, it is 37 millimeters by 70. Same with this piece right here. The width looks good, but it's just not long enough. And of course, none of the holes line up. So that's basically what I'm running into. So I'm gonna check and see what kind of aluminum I have and I'm gonna make it 70 by 17 millimeters and of course this one 70 by 37 in a U shape. Since it didn't print out the exact same size I'm just gonna have to make it up. And that's definitely not thick enough. This one is 4.83 millimeters which we might end up using. This one is 4.8 three or five. So I'm actually gonna use this small piece uh, since I don't have to waste a big piece. Kind of too close again. I am going to attempt something that I saw on another channel, and his channel is This Old Tony. He does this magic trick, so we'll give it a try. All right, so basically what Tony does in his video, the part that he needs cut out, he typically throws it at his workbench. I don't think he throws it actually at the tool, which is what I'm gonna be attempting. I'm just gonna throw it directly at the bandsaw. All right, here goes attempt number one. Not exactly what I was going for, but let's try it again. Huh, I actually lost that. I was kind of wondering where it went, but not exactly what I'm looking for. Copper, what the All right, I'm gonna give this one more try. If not, I'm just gonna cut it out. Boom! All right, so basically I just cut them out off camera. You could probably even cut this out with a hacksaw or really anything else you can come up with. So anyway, yeah, they're not 100% perfect or anything like that. Whenever I was trying to drill out these corners right here, I just used a drill bit. This one, I kind of got over just a little bit too far, but that shouldn't affect really anything. Other than that, yeah, I just kind of cut it out, sanded it down, set it right up on top of here like so, flipped it over so I could mark off where all the holes were gonna be with a marker and then just drilled out and same thing with this and if you want to see the difference in mine compared to that one if I line those up on the top edge you know it's a good quarter of an inch off and same with this one up here it's about a quarter inch difference I think it worked out pretty good like I said they're not a hundred percent perfect but I don't think they actually need to be because if you look at this I mean that's just copper wire soldered to it so really you can do pretty much whatever you want
Alright, so I kind of forgot about the capacitor mod that you can do to get rid of the extra power supply to power the spot welder. We're going to be taking a 470 microfarad 25 volt capacitor. The positive lead is going to go to VIN and the ground is obviously going to go down to the ground. Now I didn't have a brand new capacitor or anything like that. I basically pulled this off of an existing board. The leads are kind of short so I'm just going to kind of wing it and make it work. Since I wanted the option to remove the Arduino, I didn't actually solder to the board. I soldered the ground on the upper side and soldered the positive leg on the underside of the board. All right, next thing we're gonna be working on is the wires. Now at the beginning, I said I don't think I need a cable this big. This is four AWG. He basically had this from the edge of the diode and it went over to the positive side of the battery. I'm probably gonna use the same thing as these cables. And if you're building a newer version, you don't actually need this cable anymore because that big diode's already built in. Since I'm using the version 2.2, we are gonna have to make something like this. The actual welding cables, themselves from terminal to terminal is almost 22 inches so I'm guessing the cable is 19 and a half or so inches the directions tell you 50 centimeters which turns out to be about a foot and a half the welding cable that he is using right here I don't know it's got some numbers on here but it looks to be about six gauge so that's what I'm gonna be using the welding tips themselves 4.44 millimeters which is probably like what a six or eight gauge so I do think I have some of that as well so we are going to be making these and I think the directions say this is like the recommended size you can obviously go shorter or longer but he can't guarantee any results or anything like that so this is like the recommended size so that's basically what I'm gonna do I do have some welding cable and this is six gauge I'm gonna go with 19 inches and I'm gonna see if I have any of the solid cable in my copper screen scrap bin. This is like the only piece that I have. Mine is actually a little bit smaller. It is four millimeters. Now this is just a hair smaller. I don't think that's going to make too much of a difference so I'm going to go with it. All right, as you can see, I kind of filed down the tips just a little bit. I guess if these are still too sharp, then later on I will file them down just a little bit more. And there's many different ways you can attach the wires to the probes. I'm gonna be using some DIY butt connectors that I made for my power wall. These are actually made from like an ice machine water line. The only thing I did have to do real quick is flare the two ends so the six gauge copper wire will fit in the hole.
Alright, so the wire that I decided to use that comes off the diode that goes over to the positive battery terminal, I was rereading the instructable page, and if you're using a LiPo battery, I believe you can use 10 AWG wire for this, so that's what I ended up doing. If this doesn't seem to work out very well, then I'll upgrade that to the number 6 welding cable later on. All right, here's the basic setup. I believe everything is drilled and ready to go. The only thing I have left to do is secure everything down. The other thing I'd like to do is get a fuse holder. And I didn't actually order one of those because I'm gonna steal the one off my solar panels. Oh, I didn't break it. I guess we'll find out. It doesn't look like anything broke off of it, <laughs> but I felt something hit me in the head. Oh well. looking pretty good isn't it now I'm actually kind of scared to hook it up to the batteries because these lipos can discharge over 200 amps and I made a 3s 2p battery pack so that can technically discharge over 400 amps which is ridiculous so I'm actually kind of nervous about hooking this thing up because I spent all that time and it just looks so good I am definitely gonna be wearing my PPE 
I'm just kidding. I am not wearing the Hello Kitty apron because if this thing blows up, this isn't gonna help one bit. It'll probably just burn a little bit more. For this very first hookup, I'm definitely pointing the camera at everything, so if it blows up, we'll catch it on video. Let's do it. Kind of scared there. I just really didn't want it to blow up. I'm really surprised it didn't blow up. This spot welder has two different options to spot weld. One is through a foot switch and the other is the automatic pulse feature which this one is already programmed to do. The newer versions by the way they have the little tiny screen and just a few more options you can change all of those settings on that little tiny screen. Obviously since I don't have that little screen all I have are settings 0 through 20 and what the 0 through 20 means is milliseconds. Technically this is a double pulse spot welder. I'm not sure what the first one does, but the second pulse is where the milliseconds count. So we're going to start from 1 and work our way up hopefully to 20 and we'll kind of see what works the best. And for this test, I also bought some 0.15 by 8 millimeter nickel strip from Keith, which will be linked down below. Now we're going to be trying it on 40 different cells. Most of these cells, the CID has already popped and there is just a couple in there that are just really low voltage. 20 of the cells have the little nippings still left on them and the other 20 I use my Dremel tool and just kind of grinded them off. And we'll just do a quick little comparison. Oh, and I've also been warned from Aaron, the one that sent out the first Arduino spot welder, he was telling me that the aluminum U-shape on the bottom, he was telling me that the reason he did the copper wire is because sometimes the U-shape aluminum piece doesn't make full contact with the PCB board and can blow out some of the traces. I wanted to let you guys know that just in case you wanted to build one of these. Okay, now back to it. First test we're gonna do is just on nickel strip only and then we're gonna move over to the 18650s. I already know one is just not gonna do it but I'll do it for an example just so you guys can see it. Okay that was number one. I don't think it's gonna hold very well but I just wanted to show you the lowest level. Came right off. I'm gonna go up to five. Alright so that's level five. We'll go ahead and pull that off real quick. That one wasn't too strong. Level 10. All right, there is level 10. That one was pretty strong. That one wasn't bad. I should probably have something underneath here, but I don't. Maybe I'll go grab something. Level 15. Level 15. It seemed about the same as level 10, I believe. Level 20. All right, that is level 20. And I wanna say I probably didn't have enough pressure for level 15, so we'll do 15 one more time. Oh yeah, it tore off some pieces. That's pretty good. All right, I'm gonna do 15 one more time. Also keep in mind, I've only been doing the one spot weld. Typically you would have at least two on there. So we'll do two on 15. All right, there's two different ones on 15. All right, that's on there. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Two of them on 15 is good. And we'll do two on 20. All right, there is two of them on 20. Oh yeah, that's pretty good.
Alrighty, there you go. Now obviously I don't have like another spot welder to compare this by, but for my first spot welder, this thing is pretty damn awesome. I mean, it was pretty easy to build. There wasn't really anything too complicated. I guess some of the stuff took a little longer to build, like maybe cutting out the aluminum pieces, but you can make it in a day. I'd say the best spot weld settings are probably like the 15 to 20 milliseconds because it leaves a lot of the prickly sharp things right on the cells. You know, the ones that like to tear you open. Speaking of the little sharpies, you can actually spot weld right over all of that stuff and this has no problems. Basically, it depends on your pressure and how close you get the probes together. Probe. I mean, I don't know how close you should get. I don't know, maybe I'll do some more tests. I try to keep it equal throughout the entire test just to have something to compare by. Now, of course, in this video, I didn't have time to do any of the fuse or fuse wire. I would imagine this would be able to do it, maybe on some of the lower settings, but I'll have to do that in another video slash movie because this one's long enough. And you'll be glad to know that none of the traces blew off the PCBs. Now, I do know this thing is capable of handling like 1400 amps. So maybe if you add more lipos in parallel, maybe that would blow out some traces. I honestly don't know. Oh, and speaking of the battery, we started out at 12.5 volts and we are now at 12.2. And I did well over 200 spot welds with this little testaroni. 
so there's plenty of battery left. I'd say probably my only complaint that I've come up with so far is if you do maybe about a hundred spot welds consecutively, it'll just stop. I don't know if it's like the Arduino needs to be reset or if it's getting too hot. I mean, I did kind of feel around a little bit and I didn't feel anything hot, but I was thinking maybe add a little fan or something like that because I know in the new version, he actually prints out like a 3D printed case with a fan on it. So maybe it's just a good idea to add a fan anyway. Second complaint would be holding onto the probes for too long your fingers get kind of tired. So if I had like a 3D printer or if I came up with some like little design, you know, like probe holder, that would be great. Other than that, this spot welder is awesome. All right, well, I think that's pretty much all I got. This video has gone on long enough. Let me know what you think in the comment section or if you have any questions. I'm gonna have a metric crap ton of links down in the description box, including all the information for this spot welder. Like I said before, it's not mine. It's Molectronics or Captain Blue. And also you can actually buy this spot welder already pre-built. You don't have to build it if you don't want to. And of course, I'm gonna have a link to all the lipos I got from Tom. There's actually two different places, his store and on eBay. I'm gonna have a link for the XT connectors, nickel strip. All right, I'm pretty much just gonna have a link for everything I used in the video. Oh, and I'm also gonna have a link to NJ Fullwider5. He's one of my Patreons. He has done a whole bunch of DIY spot welder builds. Definitely check out his channel. Quit. Hey, I need that. Speaking about Patreons, I want to give a big shout out to all of my supporters. Thank you for supporting me. I'm going to be giving away this spot welder to one of you. So if anybody else wants to sign up and have a chance to win this Arduino spot welder, and of course support me, make sure you click on the Patreon link down below. I have options from $1 all the way up to $25. And if you do the $25 option, I will send you a free Average Joe t-shirt. I'm just not sure when the giveaway is going to be because I still want to test it out just a little bit more. Also, whoever the lucky Patreon winner is, I'm also going to include Keith's 18650 body bag sample pack. Now I'm talking way too much. I need to shut the hell up. Just tell me to shut up. Big thanks to Aaron for sending me out his Arduino spot welder for me to check out a year ago. I guess I could technically send yours back meow. Big thanks to Tom from Battery Hookup for sending out all the LiPo batteries. All right, that's it. I'm done. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and share if you want to. And I'll see you on the next one. Boom out. I don't know. I hope that's enough. You know how long it actually took me to make this video? One day. I got like a portion of it done in one day, and then the rest of it, including editing, took me, I'm afraid to say, about two weeks. So make sure you give me a big thumbs up. And then, yeah, we have two. The tips, I believe, are just made out of some regular conduit, just some some really thick, not conduit, but, uh, um, and, uh, yeah, um, um, my eye's twitching. Uh, and, uh, um, I'm just gonna throw it directly at the work, workbench. And the capa- the capacitive. So, um, stop. Stop. I'm pro- no, 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 no. This is probably only going to be maybe three or four inches long, so I'm going to have to cut. Hi ho. So I'm going to have to cut a piece for that too. Come on, dude. Quit. No. Yeah, that probably wasn't a good idea. Now I got to get them all. My bad. Made a hell of a noise too. Yep, I'm probably gonna lose some also. Yep, hopefully I got them all. So uh... no 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 dude. No. No. And I made a 2S, 3S? It's not funny, Keith. My snippies are kind of broken. Let me get another pair. I just broke them. You see that? I just broke these. All right, we're gonna use scissors instead. And this spot water, spot water, 
I'm gonna have a link for the quit, dude, quit. Quit, dude, how do you mess with everything? These little tiny, hi, buddy. Hi. Come on up here. Quit, quit. If you're gonna stay up here, just chill, dude. Your tail, over there. Qu quit, dude, quit. Your tail is rubbing up against everything. Hey. Your tail, dude. No, it's a bag, dude. You've seen plenty of bags. Oh my God, you're driving me nuts, so dude. Just stay on one part of the table, please. You have to like touch everything. No, 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 no. All right, just come on over here then. Come on, dude, I really want to do this video. It's taking too long. Yeah, I love you too. Yeah. Okay, back in the chair. Quit wagging your tail. If you would sit up here and just like chill for a couple minutes, that would be great. But you're you're whipping your tail all over the place. Is that because I'm yelling at you? Probably because I'm yelling at him. I want to give a big quit, dude. He's like terrorizing everything.